Here's how you can turn a simple sketch like this into a cute illustration in just four steps. I'll show you the painting process first, and we can paint this line together. And after that, I'll show you the tricks I use to draw and sketch cute characters, sort of from my perspective as someone who struggles with drawing. Be sure to check the description for a list of the brushes and textures I'm using here. And you can also download the line sketch for free if you want to follow right along with me. So the main drawing is already placed in here. I've set it as the top layer, and I'm going to set the transparency mode of this to multiply. And I'll start painting on a blank layer down here below the sketch. And the first thing that I'm going to do is break up this illustration by color. And each color is going to be a separate layer, and everything is going to sort of fit together like a puzzle. So for example, I'm going to use the abstract round brush in this medium yellow color to basically do a wash that covers all the yellow portions of this line. And because this wash goes beyond the sketch pretty much everywhere, I'm going to use the eraser brush to cut it back so it lines up better. And I'll go through the whole illustration just like this, painting all the major elements and making sure they're on their own layers. And once all these major elements have been blocked out, we can move on to the second step here, which is adding the textures. So I'm going to add a blank layer above everything. I just want to add a kind of liney or hairy texture. So I'm going to select pure white for this. For the brush, I'm not going to use a watercolor brush. I'm going to go to the uh, drawing tab here and use this Freysonette brush. And I'll use it around maybe 12% or something. And what I'll do is, I'll do a bunch of light lines kind of in the direction of the fur and that's good for the nose. I'll use the same brush at a much smaller size and do a very fine lining texture on the mane. And I did these textures on their own layer because I want to lower the opacity to kind of control that effect. So I'll set it to a point where it's just barely visible. Now I'm going to sort of do this again on another blank layer but instead of white I'm going to use a dark brown color, and I'll do it again, but a little bit more sparingly this time. And this time, I'm going to lower the opacity as well, but I'm also going to change the transparency mode to multiply. And this one's going to be very, very subtle. There we go. Now the reason I only did texture on the nose and the mane, and not the face and the body, is just because I think that might be too much texture and it's a little too overwhelming. But that's very subjective and definitely up to your own style. But once the texture is all done and I'm happy with how it looks, I'm going to merge everything so far onto one layer. And with the textures finished, I can move on to the third step here, which is shading. So as long as this layer with our character is selected, we can do all the shading with the selection tool. So grab the selection tool and set it to freehand. And as an example, I'll add a shadow here under the arm. So I'll just select that area connect it back, cue saturation and brightness, and I'm just going to darken it a little bit. And I'm going to go through and add all the shadows just like this. There isn't a lot of science to this, I'm just adding shadows wherever I think it needs a little bit of help with the contrast and the layering. Now for the main, I want to add a sort of curved shadow. So I'll use the freehand selection tool again, and I'll make a U-shaped selection. This time, I'm going to feather it out to soften the edge of it. Hue saturation and brightness, and I'll lower the brightness just to darken that area. And to make this guy look a little bit less flat, I'm going to add an overall shadow. So again, freehand selection tool. I'll just select up one side. I'll feather this one out quite a bit, and I'll darken it just a tiny, tiny bit. Now if your shadows look a little bit too crisp and you want to soften them up, you can switch your brush back to the watercolor brushes and use the water blender. And you can go in there and kind of strategically uh, break up the hard edge of the shadow. And with the shadows finished, we can move on to the fourth and final step of this process and add all the remaining details. And these are going to be on their own layer. So I'll make a new layer above everything. For the brush, you could use uh, any kind of pencil-like brush, but I really like this little pine brush under the drawing tab. And I'll start by penciling in the hat. And for the face, I'll just do the ears in a dark brown, then the eyes and the nose and the mouth in pure black. 
Then I'll use some pink to add rosy cheeks. And then I'll use white very lightly to add the uh, strap for the hat. Then I'll move on and use some purple to finish up the cake. I'll add a little bit of brown to the end of the tail. And then I'll add some lines on the hands and the feet for claws. Now I think one of the most important things about adding details to your illustrations is to keep in mind the edges of the materials that you're using. And what I mean is, since this is a kind of furry creature, it doesn't make sense that the edges here are perfectly smooth like this. This would be more suitable for something like an elephant or a dolphin. And there's two ways here I want to show you how to give this a furry edge. The first one is adding splits. So I'm going to make sure the layer with our line is selected. Then I'll grab the eraser brush and I'm going to use it at a small size. And I'm just going to start with very light pressure and then press harder just so I get this kind of V-shape cut out. And I'm going to do this randomly in a few places. And this is normally what I do to give something a sort of feathery texture, but I think it suits this one just fine. The second trick I like to use is adding a furry outline. So for that, I'm going to make sure my detail layer is selected. And for the brush, I'm going to use the little pine. For the color, I want it to be a slightly darker version of the actual fur. And I'm just going to go along all these edges and do a kind of furry line effect just like this. And there we go. I'll add a little bit of confetti and this cute line is all done. Once again, the four main steps for this technique are first fill out all the main colors, then add the textures for the different materials, followed by the shadows and the highlights. In this case, we didn't need any highlights. And lastly, draw the elements of the face and all the remaining miscellaneous details. Now when it comes to sketching characters like this, the first thing I do is make a very loose sketch of the general idea, and I make sure to get all the major elements in there. I kind of feel like I just need to get my idea out on paper as quickly as possible, and I don't really worry about making it look good. And this next part is really important. After the initial sketch, I'll actually kind of sketch on some colors as well. This helps me start to figure out the color palette early on, but more importantly, the color adds sort of weight to the illustration, and it's critical for the next step. So after the sketch is colored in, I'm gonna use the warp tool and the liquify tool. These tools let me fix the proportions and I can kind of stretch and lengthen and shorten different parts. And for this, I'm totally going by feeling, but I'm paying special attention to the balance of the overall character and trying to make sure he feels kind of stable and not like he's gonna tip over or something. And finally, once everything looks good, I'm gonna make a super clean trace over everything and this is how I create the final drawing that we used at the beginning of this tutorial. If you like this tutorial and you want to paint another cute character, I think you'll love to watch this Mr. Badger tutorial next.